All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gaming with the Bros podcast, episode 22. Harrison, I don't know about you, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling 22. Uh, you know what? I am too. Feeling a little 22. Is my mic too loud, or is that? It might be a little bit too loud. Yeah, maybe a tad bit. I'll turn. A bit too loud. That should be better. Okay, cool. Sorry cool. about that. If I blew anyone's yeah. eardrums just now. <laughs> so uh, welcome in, guys. Um, welcome to the show this week. It's been uh, been another solid week, I guess. Um, yes. <laughs> feeling, a little, feeling a little bit more quarantine-ish than last week. I went to a couple of different stores. And uh, well, so first of all, Kaylee is trying to buy a switch, but okay. there are zero no. <laughs> anywhere. Is she is she trying to get like a switch, switch light? So she she wants the regular switch <laughs> that way she can play like on her TV and stuff. Yeah. Um. So her and Brittany went to Walmart a couple of days ago, and they were out. And then um, Saturday, after we went over to to mom and dad's house to do some uh, Easter egg hunting with the kids, mm-hmm. um, I went to Best Buy, and they they weren't allowed to at all to go into Best Buy. Um, you could only do like pickups and stuff through like the little drive through system they've got going on. Right. Um, so I had asked if they had any switches in stock and they did not. So, and I, I've, lo- I've looked on Amazon and like Amazon's got them like selling them for like five, six hundred dollars and stuff like that just because mm-hmm. pe- people know that people have been wanting them. So, See, that's what yeah. we've been trying to do, but um, yeah, they scalping are, they is are scalping is bad right now for the for the switches. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the um, the uh, the Animal Crossing switch was going for like seven hundred dollars or something crazy. My God, jeez, oh, Louise, like no way. It's like who would actually pay seven hundred dollars for a three hundred dollar item? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be back in stock. Like, yeah, you just eventually can wait. It's not like a limited edition or or anything like that. So yeah. Yeah, it's That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> I think I think Walmart had a couple of lights available, mm-hmm. but she she wants the the regular one. And I think I think yesterday she was like, "No, well maybe I'll just get a light." And I said, "No, we'll just wait. I mean, it's not a big deal. We'll wait." Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might as well you might as well do what you want. Go for it all the way. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, so yeah, she she's been wanting to switch. So actually, well, I got her um, a two DS a couple of years ago, and within like a week, she sat on it and broke the screen. Mm-hmm. So, last couple of days, I broke out my um, my original 3DS, and she started playing Animal Crossing: New, New Leaf, and she nice. is loving it. Really? Yeah, she was really into it. Like it was. Uh, well, we had, we had a couple of issues. I I didn't realize that you could change the time within the game itself. I thought it had to be on the system. So it was like a weird issue where like, it was showing like 2021, and like the the timing was off. Um, mm-hmm. Finally, we got it corrected, and she got to do like the Bunny Day event um the past couple of days so oh so they have that on mm-hmm. new leaf still yeah that's cool so i think within within every every other animal crossing game other than this one all that stuff is already programmed in the, the game like yeah on the game card itself gotcha. versus now it's not um just to just to prevent people from you know time time warping and whatever oh so in new leaf you could skip to yeah christmas and have the Santa event or whatever. I don't exactly. know exactly. if they have that, but oh, okay. So you can't, you can't, obviously can't do that in uh, New Horizons. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can you can skip time, but you won't be able to experience, you know, a Halloween or Christmas event or or what have you, unless unless you come back during Halloween. Exactly. Come back from the future. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, she's she's. I didn't think she would, because she was like, "Well, how do I make money?" And I was like, "Well, you just gotta like." And I was like, well, I, I didn't really play New Leaf that much. So honestly, I couldn't really mm-hmm. tell you much about it. But um, I was like, you just got to, like, collect stuff and just sell it. So, but yeah, she's super enjoying it. I didn't, I didn't think she would, but. Nice. I mean, what is she doing? Is she just fishing and shaking trees? Yeah. Talking to villagers? Yeah. Yep. She was doing, like, some of the bunny stuff today, collecting mm-hmm. the eggs. She's like, where do I get all the eggs? I'm like, you just got to gotta search around. <laughs> is it the same like same event pretty much yeah yeah it had like zipper or whatever um and it looked like kind of the same stuff that i was doing today that she was mm-hmm. doing with collecting the eggs and finding all six kinds of eggs and he would give her stuff so oh nice but um but yeah how how was your week my week was good uh work is a little bit slower right now um 
which it, it's it's good and bad thing good i get to relax a little bit and bad that i'm just kind of at home so yeah like i kind of get distracted doing other things around the house or yep. sometimes playing animal crossing <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, um, I've had a little bit of that trouble too where i'll like stop doing something and then i don't know i'll just get distracted with something it's hard to separate the two yeah. when you're at home i think now do, do you have like a own do you have like your own little space or are you are you kind of just like in the living room when you're working yeah i'm in the living room we have a desk in the living room mm -hmm. oddly enough um so alicia's at the table and then i'm at the desk okay like we we're, we're a little bit separated um but yeah i have my own like little work area and we just mounted this is gonna sound kind of dumb but we mounted a 22 inch tv above the desk mm -hmm. so like i use that as my second monitor but like i have gotcha. a ton more room now because i don't have to stack the tv on top of a, like a box yeah yeah now i can like push it back to the wall and pull it to the side i mean it's pretty that's nice cool. yeah yeah that's, that's kind of what i've had to do um I'm, I'm trying to get a new cord so i can do uh have like essentially a third monitor because that's what i have at work mm -hmm. usually is three monitors um so i've got like the little laptop and then they provided us the monitor to work but i, I want to try to use my little mini tv that i have as a third monitor mm -hmm. But yeah, luckily I've got the game room and I can kind of just be in here, you know, throw on yeah. like a, some music or podcast or something and just kind of work away. But yeah, it, it is very easy. It is very easily to get distracted by doing stuff or whether or not you're cleaning up or, uh, you know, while I'm at lunch break or something, I'll come up and, uh, you know, make me like a little salad or something. And then I start doing yeah. something outside and I'm like, oh wait, I got to go back inside. <laughs> <laughs> I have work to do. <laughs> so, uh, um. But yeah, it's it's a little bit more difficult than I thought it was gonna be, but it's still not too bad. It's still way better than actually having to commute to work every day. So Yeah, I don't know. I'm kinda of getting to the point where I'm ready to go back. It's yeah. been it's been a month for me. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of it's wearing off. Like the the fun of it is wearing off. I'm just ready to see people interact. I had like a like a Zoom meeting with a bunch of bunch of friends from North Carolina on Friday. Mm. I think they were like 15 of us in the in the meeting oh, wow. 15 or 20 people and we we were just catching up and what one of one of my friends just had a baby okay so she was showing off uh showing off her baby and we played quiplash i think you, oh, you've cool. probably played it before right with um with jackbox yeah 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 Yeah, but we played quiplash and that's that's super fun and like really easy to play over over zoom mm -hmm. um maybe even better to play over zoom because it's kind of more anonymous there's a more anonymous anonymousness what's the word for it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but it's it was it was really fun um it was good to see good to see all my friends mm -hmm. and kind of revitalize me a little bit because i've been kind of i don't know just kind of low energy low motivation over the past yeah. week so that helps yeah that's um yeah again uh, we, i mean we've talked about this before but just in certain situations where you don't have yard work or something to do like mm -hmm. it's just kind of I could see that it just kind of gets boring. I mean, yeah, you can catch up on playing and play video games and watch movies and stuff, but at some point, that only gets like, you so far. Yeah, so at some point, you're just like, ah, so I got the house and do something. Yeah, and I ordered. I actually ordered a new skateboard on Thursday. Okay, cool. And everything was supposed to come in this weekend, but it got held up. Everything. Yeah, I got held up. Everything but my trucks came in, and I had some old ones I tried to put on, but like they were so frayed that I couldn't even get the mm. get the nut on the on the truck yeah so I was super bummed because i wanted to go out and like skate a little bit today and just kind of go around the city but i'll have to wait till till tomorrow or the day after to do that but oh well, at least you got something to look forward to yeah yeah get, get, and... get something i think i think all the parks are closed though yeah I, I think a lot of them are like state mandated well i know like here our parks are still open but like the the swing sets and like the jungle gyms and stuff are closed mm -hmm. just because a lot, you know, a lot of kids would be in a tight spot. Um, so, I mean, that, they, they may be, well, you know, it might be a little bit different in, in uh, Virginia, but. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I have my drive over there tomorrow just to see, cause like it's, it's impossible to tell, like just looking online. Cause like they're not going to update it for every single piece of parks and recreation. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So. I just have to yeah. We, that. um, 
we had we had gotten it about a year or so ago, but we got one of those like little carts that you put behind your bike um, for Kellen. So like he's yeah. he getting a little cart or whatever, and we'll, we started bike riding and stuff. So uh, he he nice. likes. You know, just trying to try and get out of the house and and do stuff with the kids because every time we like every time we go to the grocery store, Kaylee's always like, kind of come, kind of come. Like, no, you can't come. But right, she's like, she just wants to get out, right? She's like, I just want to get out of the house. I'm like, I know, but we can't have you go out every time we go out. Just right, but it is the way it is. Ah, uh, to be a kid during this time <laughs> has to be so bad. <laughs> well, so like. The other, so Friday, I think, Brittany comes down and she's like, um, one of her neighbors, um, but it's Kaylee's best friend. Um, and then they had moved, they had moved a while ago, but she's like, I got a text from Heather this morning that her daughter's like boyfriend, whatever, um, mm-hmm. that lives across the street from us, um, had sent her a text message and said something about, um, you know, Isaiah had passed away this morning due to the coronavirus and um, <laughs> the, the, uh, the funeral's not gonna be held to August, you know, reach out to me if you need some more information or something. I was like, I, they've been out every day playing, like, it's gotta be like some joke or something. And then sure not, like five minutes later, Brittany uh, took a picture of the kid walking out no. to get the mail. I'm like, that's uh, such a messed up joke to send to somebody. Yeah, Jesus. Wait, who sent the mom to that? No, like the kid had got a hold of his mom's phone and sent that to um to our to our old neighbor's um to Heather, our old neighbor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's like, so stupid. <laughs> I was like I was like, I just saw him outside like yesterday playing like he was It's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, what what um I haven't really been playing that much. Um well, I've been playing a lot of Resident Evil. Is right. I, have, I haven't played a ton of different games. Um, yeah, I think I've beaten Resident Evil three times now. Working on the fourth, I've um, I managed to do a run with only healing once. Um, I be, I did a run for beating it in under two hours, and right now I'm trying to do a run of beating it without using the item box. Nice. Um, and then after that, I'll probably go for the hardcore mode and uh, and get through that with s ranking nice but man that game is god that game is much fun yeah it's it's really fun to play through i i accident well not accidentally but i i did a no death run which didn't give you any achievements it kind of sucked because i was trying to get under two hours and i didn't have i only had like the first pistol that you unlocked but i know there's a better weapon that you can get that kind of make kind of make it easier Mm mm-hmm um, but I hit like two hours and sixteen minutes, so it's really close. Oh, okay. That, yeah. That was my yeah, third I unlocked time. the uh, the infinite assault rifle. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So, so what I did, and I don't, I don't know if you know this. It's not necessarily a trick, but it, the part where you take over as Carlos in the hospital and you have to fight off the uh, the horde, mm-hmm. I did that part like thirty times. I've just been using the pistol and the assault rifle to get to get those kills up. And then unable to get the get the points because every time you go through it, even if you die or you restart um, from a save point, it still saves everything. So you're not losing your kills. Oh. Yeah. So, so I do that. Can... Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a that's a good idea. I know I didn't know if you reloaded that it would keep your stats. Yeah. So I think as long as you auto save, um, because I would just go through the part skip all the cutscenes, and then once I took over as Jill again, I just reloaded it as Carlos and uh, and just created like a save point from there. And then I just every, I don't know, maybe once or twice a day I'll run through it and get those nice. kills up. And I've already, I mean, I've already got the assault rifle and pistol kills. So there's not much else I can get in that spot just because you don't have like the mag or um, like the grenade launcher or anything like that. But it's a, it's a great way to just Mm-hmm. Get like kill like sixty or seventy enemies um, at a time because I think two thousand is the one that you need. I think that's the last one you need. And I think I'm, I think I'm right around fourteen hundred or something like that. So it's the last a, it's, one you need because like one one of the the records or whatever you can get is killing two thousand zombies over the course of you know all the games that you you play or whatever. And uh, so that, that's mm-hmm. what I'm working on now. 
That's good. Nice. Yeah, I haven't even really thought about the challenges too much. I've just been trying to get my time down. But yes, I haven't I played. Yeah, because if you get that infinite uh, machine gun, you can blow through. Like, because all I did was I just got the infinite assault rifle. I got um, two of the attack coins and then mm. one of the recovery coins and just blew through the whole game. Like, you can destroy Nemesis with the assault rifle and. Yeah, you just blow through it. I think I think my best time was one forty five. I think. Nice. Which is which is so. Did crazy. you ever get the? Do what? I'm sorry. Did you ever get the the infinite pistol? Like not it's not a pistol per se, but it's like a like a laser pistol. Uh oh, you talking about like the the one where it only attacks like their weak spots? Yeah. No, I haven't got that one yet. Okay, that's the one I just unlocked. But I haven't played. I haven't done another playthrough yet. So okay. I'm wondering if that'll if that'll shave down some time. And I also have Probably. the um, the lock pick and mm-hmm. the whatever the other tool is. I can't remember. Oh, the so make it quicker, cutters or whatever. Bolt cutters, yeah. Yeah, I got that, and then I got the. I can't remember what it's called, but you as long as you're holding it, you create more ammo. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yep. And then I think the next one I'm probably going to get is like the the Chris like Chris Redfield guidebook or whatever, where it makes it easier to to dodge and stuff. So, but yeah, nice. man, it's it's uh, and this is why I love Resident Evil as a franchise because they always do such a great job of making you replay the campaigns, and and it's crazy mm-hmm. how fast you can beat them. Like just run through the campaign in like an hour and a half is like kind of crazy to think about, but I mean it can be done. Yeah, so it's, it's especially cool. starting from like six hours on the first playthrough, going yeah. down to two hours, hour and a half. Like that's so cool. That you yeah, can do that. yeah. So it's it's definitely it's definitely cool. And and again, just like there was never really any spots in the game where like I dread going through. Uh, mm-hmm. no, I th- that one thing I don't, the one part I don't like is like the I think it's where like the power station where you have to fight those bugs, the where like bugs. Where, where you get the lot pick and like that bug like jams those par- parasites down your throat and you have to uh take an herb yeah pill. that's yeah i mean even that's that a short like, section yeah it's like two minutes if you know exactly where you're going so it's not very long but that's like the one part i can really think of that's i don't like i, well, I don't love the um the, the lab at the end oh yeah yeah especially what? when you have to do the section where you have to you have to grab the three mm-hmm. fuses yeah that part just kind of drags out Bit. yeah um I, th- and I think it helps when you when you go for the uh for the weapon for the weapon records because once you get the mag um and that's pretty much what i was focusing on towards the end of that game was just using the mag and you know the grenade launcher and stuff and trying to trying to get those skills up because i have like certain save points like i have i have one save point like i think at the first time you get to save that way I can always just reload that save and not have to go through the the intro every single time, because um, the intro thing is like 10, 10 minutes, but something like mm-hmm. that. And then I got one right before where you go into the warehouse and you have to get the three fuses um, to go up to the elevator. Yeah. Um. So it's it's so you're trying to get your kills up, but what do you get? I mean, you just get points, right? You just get more points, so you get a lot more stuff. I'm trying to get the I mean, the main goal is to get the the rocket launcher, the infinite rocket launcher. Yeah. And then after that, I'll get I'll get the other the other stuff. But um, yeah. Are I, you going just, for? Mm, yeah, it just add, it adds a little more replayability to the game. Going are you going for, for all achievements? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> try. Oh, I got I've got I'm I'm pretty close to getting them all. Um, I think. Uh, I I got the one in the warehouse where you have to get all the fuses under five minutes. Mm. Um. And other than that, I think it's just beating the game on like the hardest difficulty. Have you played the hardest? No, yeah. I haven't. I haven't started yet. I'm trying to get the the rocket launcher first, and then and then do a run through it. <laughs> That'll be easy once you have the rocket launcher. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely really really enjoying this game, and I'm I, I really do want to go back to two, and try that. But the only the only thing with two is, I don't necessarily like the fact that you have to be like sp- pretty much speed run it to unlock the weapons i kind of wish that they did what they did with three and had like the point system where you could you know work through certain guns and stuff but so are there unlockable weapons in re2 
yeah yeah you can you can get like the infinite machine gun and stuff but i think it's all tied to beating the game under a certain amount of time like on the hardest setting or something like that okay and then i think killing or destroying all the bobbleheads or the raccoon heads or something like that um unlocks you something uh infinite handgun or something gotcha uh, but i do want to go back and play too yeah i'm like in like in three so much but uh well, like that's well I, i've also been playing um so i downloaded this game called agony i don't know if you've ever heard of it i've heard of it yeah i heard of so it I, I, I used to see it on facebook all the time like it's like oh this is the scariest game ever and blah 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 mm-hmm. it was on sale for like two or three bucks so i, I picked it up and uh it's pretty bad <laughs> Yeah, I like I, I've I played like five minutes of it, and the game was so freaking dark that I just could not see where to go. And I know I can change the settings, but I was like, nah, I'm good. Like the yeah, it's, it's first person, and I really don't know the story behind it, but it, it just seems like it's probably gonna be pretty bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're probably not gonna play it again. I might, I might boot it up here again, maybe once or twice, but yeah, it just. Mm-hmm. Well, going back to RE, I feel I went through kind of a bender this week of <laughs> of playing a bunch of different Resident Evils. So I started out beating three for a third time, and I was like, "Well, I never played Claire's story in Resident Evil 2. so I went back and played that. I, I played the second run version, okay, which I think gets you the like the true ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have um, played, um uh, what's his face. Oh, what is his name? Mr. Something. I can't not, remember. Not Mr. X. It's a... Uh, no, 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 not Mr. X. Park, um, Parkin... Some... Oh, gosh. I can't whatever. remember. Him. Anyways, uh, Birkin. 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 Fight Mr. Um, Birkin. Uh, William, William Birkin. Uh, so yeah. That's where you fight him, like, on the, the train, right? You, you, you fight, fight him on the train, and you get, like, the minigun. The minigun, that's and what it... Okay, I knew there was, like, a... Is him up. Gun. Yeah. Yeah. But Claire's section or Claire's Claire's version of the game was fairly different from yeah, Leon's. It was, yeah, it was, it was it was fairly different. Yeah, like it had had Sherry's sections, mm-hmm. which I thought I thought her section was pretty cool when she was running away from. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely like a, a different style. It's good change up. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty freaky too. Like, just like kind of really really intense. It was kind of like um in Resident Evil Four where you take over as Ashley. Isn't there yeah, a spot? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, there is a spot. So it's kind of like they. I mean, that's been done before in, in Resident Evil, but yeah, those, those are always nice spots to kind of break up the break up the gameplay a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it's. I mean, like the. Okay, one thing that threw me off was with Claire's playthrough, I encountered Mister X in like the first fifteen minutes of the game. Yeah. And I was like, shit! I got I got to deal with this whole thing. Yeah. I, I think. I think he was triggered by an event. Like if you walk up to like the, the third floor and then go down a hallway, that's when he comes up. Mm-hmm. So if I would have known that, I would have done other stuff first just so I didn't have to deal with him. Yeah. Like an hour and a half before I actually went on to the, the sewers and, and everything else. Um, yeah, it's, it's heard- weird because you, you do puzzles in the, the police department, but they're different than what Leon did. But mm-hmm. I don't know. It's 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 kind of weird. Like at first, I was like, "Well, I don't." This is kind of seems like more of a a reshuffle of or like a shuffle of Leon. Because if it was that case, I was yeah. kind of disappointed. But then it started to get different enough where I was enjoying it. And then spoilers, but uh, Mister X dies <laughs> in Claire's campaign, which I mean, he comes back. Well, um, Birkin rips Mister X in half. And like, like literally, like rips him in half when he's like standing at a at an elevator about to get Claire and Sherry. Yeah. So my impression was that he died. I guess he can He comes back for Leon's campaign at the end. Yeah. But to me, it looked like Mister X was straight dead. <laughs> I don't remember. But I mean, I. It was it was somewhere in the middle of the game. Okay. Yeah, when you're right before you get to uh, Miss Birkin, I don't I can't remember her name. The doctor. Yeah, yeah. It's probably. It's. I mean, it's been a while since you played it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll probably end up playing it again, but but yeah. Yeah. But I did realize that Resident Evil Two has a ton more puzzles than Resident yes. Evil Three. 
Yes, Res- yeah, Resident Evil 2 is, is way more puzzle heavy than it's 3. Very, very puzzle heavy. I wouldn't even say 3 has any puzzles. It's other, other than like the... That's not even a puzzle either. You just have to find the um, the jewels at the very beginning of the game. Right. And then you have like that serum puzzle when you're creating the, yeah, the vaccine. But, but that's like... That's not really a puzzle. <laughs> no, no. Um, so yeah, yeah. 3 is definitely suited more towards like probably speed runs than two mm-hmm. is just because like it's just you just go through which is which is cool I, I do appreciate that they're pretty different and three is a little bit more actiony i guess than yeah two. i mean i like replaying three more than i liked replaying two just because mr x is so tense yeah and it kind of it's it's a little too much sometimes but with resident evil three you can just kind of blow through it yeah, yeah. it's yeah once mr x comes into the to the picture it's I mean, at that point, you're you still got a little ways to go in the the police department. So, so I mean, sometimes you just want to explore, and it's kind of hard to mm-hmm. with him running around or walking right. around. So yeah, it's um yeah. Even though obviously the main point of behind Resident Evil Three is Nemesis, but he's he, he's not he's not in the game a ton. Um, there's, he's there's, scripted there's, too. Yeah, there's plenty of points where uh you know you have your freedom to just explore without having to worry about him trying to kill you. Right, which is nice, it's super nice. Um, and then after after I played through Claire's story in Resident Evil Two, I decided to take a romp back into Resident Evil Seven, and this was the first time I played it in non VR. Okay. Yeah, and it was still very good. Like, still pretty freaky at the beginning, but once you start getting weapons, um, I mean, it's just not as not as scary once you start getting like the shotgun and yeah, flamethrower and all that. So I played through that and beat it. And it, what kind of bums me out is in order to get the walking shoes to walk faster, you have to beat it in under four hours. But I feel like in order to beat it in under four hours, you have to have the walking shoes because like, you walk so slow. It's yeah. like unbelievably slow. Like trying to dodge boss attacks was, was like a nightmare because I felt like I was just crawling to the right or left and I was trying to dodge. I was like, oh my God. I, and I guess it's slow because it was built for VR. So like you want your character to move a little slower to, to deter motion sickness. Mm-hmm. But God, Ethan's a slow boy. I'll tell you what. <laughs> he is. Well, it, it's, it's funny. Cause I, I had hundred, I hundred percent of that game. Um, mm-hmm. And I, th- I think it probably has like the best weapons or, or the best unlockables of any game. Cause yeah, you get, you mm-hmm. get the running shoes, which is kind of a weird I don't know. It's 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 weird, but it's like, should then should that it, not already? It, it really does help you walk a ton faster. Um, but the, once you get like the buzz saw and stuff, it's mm-hmm. that replaces the because I, I think what I did was got the buzz saw, and then I used that to run through the game because you can just tear enemies up, like like it's nothing with the buzz saw. So I think that definitely helped helped um, being able to beat it under four hours, but um. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that bus saw was really cool. I think that's probably how like you, one of my. Do it. How do you get the bus saw? I don't remember. It's you. You may have to get all the collectibles or something. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's probably one of my favorite unlockables since like the hand cannon from Dead Space Two. Do you remember that? It was like the foam finger. Mm-hmm. He was like, oh yeah, and it would like destroy enemies in one hit. But there was there wasn't any projectiles that came out of it. It was just <laughs> like they just exploded just like when you <laughs> aimed at them. It was, That's funny. But, but yeah, that, that was a really cool unlockable. But nice, yeah, seven seven is quite good. I, I cannot seven, wait for, man. for eight. Cannot wait for eight. Seven's amazing. And then after seven, I did uh, separate ways in RE four, which is Ada's part yeah. of the story, and it's like it's like three hours long, um, five chapters, mm-hmm. and you, you're pretty much playing like the you're you're just filling in the gaps pretty much yeah, yeah. for when ada shows up and like saves leon's ass mm-hmm. like two or three times in the game yeah. which yeah which she does a lot <laughs> um there was like one one chapter in the game or one section of one chapter in the game that was like completely different and completely new but everything else you were just running through the same areas right as you did with leon so like it was all right um it didn't add much to the story but it allows you to unlock the Chicago typewriter typewriter yes. in Leon's campaign, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I feel like RE4 could use an upgrade or use an update, use a remaster. Yes, yes, because, yeah, I played it not too long ago, and it's, it's, it's very slow. Like the pseudo tank controls are kind of yeah. kind of aged. Yes. I think. Yeah, it's, I, I, it's I would love to see a, a, re, a remake of 4, you know, in the style of 2 and 3. Um, yeah. That could be super cool, but. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely aged, for sure. Quite a bit, I think. Yeah. And then lastly, in my Resident Evil Escapade, I played, <laughs> I, I started Leon's campaign in Resident Evil 6 back in December. Mm -hmm. I think I only played through two chapters. I was like, mm, I think I've had enough of this. <laughs> I think I get the picture. I think, um, what's the guy's name who did transfer? Michael Bay. Yeah left his print enough on this game and then and then today <laughs> i decided to yeah and i decided to play through the rest of it today and i don't know if you played or remember anything about leon's campaign in resident evil 6 but the catacombs is like the like the worst level ever for any resident evil played it that far um but then chapters four and five were pretty good i mean obviously the action was like ramped up to 10 and it I know they said the Leon's campaign was like the most down to earth campaign, but if this is the case, then I want to play through Chris's campaign just to see what that's like. <laughs> I mean, he's probably like blowing up the world by the end of the game. Oh yeah. Well, at the end of Resident Evil five, he's literally punching a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty ridiculous. This melon arms. <sighs> yeah. Oh, that was a great game. But six, six is just so, so stupid. Like, <laughs> Just, just the moves, the slides that you can do, and I don't know, man. It's just, it's not Resident Evil. No, no, it's, it's, yeah, definitely way more actiony. Yeah, it's fun though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see you got a couple more games to talk about, Nevermind. Well, I, I guess. Well, this. We'll, 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 um, what were you gonna say? The, the last game I have to talk about is, well, I guess aside from. Do you have anything else we want to say about Animal Crossing? Did you uh, collect everything for the Bunny Day event? I did not. Um, I had trouble finding Sky Eggs. I mean, I know they came out of balloons, but they always, always, mm -hmm. they always, ugh, I can't talk. They, um, there were it wasn't guaranteed to get an egg every time you popped <laughs> right. a balloon. Sometimes it was a, a DIY recipe or something like that. Um, I, I will say <laughs> this. I hate the Bunny event. And it kind of, it kind of almost <laughs> took me off of Animal Crossing, to be honest, just because yeah, it severely same. slowed down, you know, making making money, making bells, um, getting bells and stuff. So I'm looking forward to not having any more eggs in the game and just kind of going back to back to normal. But yeah, speaking of which, they actually patched it, and I guess guaranteed less eggs. Yeah, yeah, I saw up. I saw that update and um. Yeah, there there was I was seeing less eggs, but by that point I was just kind of done with done with the eggs in general. And right. um I, I turned it on today and and um got some recipes and stuff from, from Zipper. But nice. And then um did you did you do the fishing tournament at all? I did, yeah, I did that yesterday. I only did it two or three times. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of I don't know, it was kind of lame, I guess. I was kind of hoping that there would just be like tons of fish that you could catch. But there's just a normal amount of fish. Yeah, you just kind of catch as much as you can within, you know, three minutes. And I, if you get enough points, you can get some some cool items or whatever. But yeah, it was kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a bummer. But And it really grinded my gears that you could still catch eggs during that tournament. Yes. Oh, my God. It was <laughs> the, the first fish I caught was an egg. I'm like, are you serious? I'm going to turn <laughs> this game off right now. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I was like, this is unbelievable right now. I'm I'm ready for it to be over. But yeah. tomorrow is actually an exciting day in the Animal Crossing world because KK Slider is doing a concert at my island. Oh, you got him to come? I got him to come. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So I think I'm I think I'm about to unlock terraforming. Oh sweet. Well let me change up the layout of the island. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty sweet. Yeah, so I can build like a little town, you know, put walkways and such in there. Yeah. It's be fun. I mean, yeah, I'm ready for Animal Crossing to get back to normal because i'm sick and tired of all these bunny all these yeah. eggs <laughs> and uh, and again i'm not super familiar with animal crossing and stuff like that it seems like this event's 
is kind of the same as New Leaf. Um, <laughs> well, I, I just hope like the next event, um, whether that's going to be like Halloween or some sort of summer, I don't really like collecting stuff. <laughs> like <laughs> the game's already like a collectathon, which is fine, but mm-hmm. I don't know, just more stuff to collect. I don't know. It was just yeah, kind of I'm bad sure, timing too. I'm sure they'll have pumpkins that you have to collect or something to make pumpkin stuff, but I don't know. I just wish this event didn't happen so close to the launch of the game. Yeah. Because like, I feel like people are still getting acquainted with Animal Crossing and still pr- trying to progress. And Yeah, because I mean, the beginning is very, I mean, you have to kind of grind a lot. And then, mm-hmm. you know, once you, God, I would hate for someone to uh, bought this game during the event and didn't even have oh to like, God time with it you know so. like, what can you do with all these freaking eggs i did i did get all the recipes though oh did you and so, uh, the thing you get is like a um it's like a a bunny wand okay um which you need like a bunny toy for as well as star fragments and i still mm-hmm. haven't come across any shooting stars so i'm not going to do anything with it so waste of my time <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just, yeah, I was kind of it was kind of a a bummer of event. I think it should have been more of like a a weekend three day event or something like that instead of it like almost two weeks worth of this stuff. But it should have gone from like Thursday to Sunday. But yeah. instead, it was a little it was a little long. But yeah, but it, it'll be over tomorrow, so that's cool. That's good. Um, the last game I want to talk about is the deep discount game I bought. And this game's called Hollow, and it's been discounted to a dollar from from twenty dollars an endless amount of times. So like I, I just assumed this. I actually bought this game probably about a year ago, and I've never played it. So I actually, yeah, I actually did too. I bought it a while ago and yeah. hadn't played it, but I saw it was I saw it was on sale now, so I was like, okay, I could I could play this and yeah. use it as my deep discount game. Um, it sucks. <laughs> it's, it's it's really bad it, like the frame Dang rate it. the frame rate is terrible it's it looks like a ripoff of like dead space okay um the enemies were kind of bland. I, I only played like 30 minutes of it mm-hmm. but for one you you walk super slow and you have to walk a lot to get to like the first real progression point where you like get a gun and get to actually fight enemies um, so it was just super boring too, and I, yeah, I think it's just a straight grip on <laughs> on Dead Space. Yeah, don't don't play it. It's shovelware. Well, it's not shovelware, but it's like it's a bad game. Yeah. Well, I, I, I thought it was because I, I remember downloading it because I heard that it was good, but maybe I maybe I was thinking about something different. I don't know. Hey, that's just my opinion. I played it on the Switch Lite. It didn't play it on the TV. So my opinion could be warped in some ways, but but I mean if it if it runs poorly in the light, I mean it's not gonna run that much better like on a TV. Right. There's not that much more power in the in the dock to give it. I mean maybe maybe it does run better, but but I don't know. It was like a about it consistent maybe consistent twenty FPS, but then it'll drop down further than that Ugh. fairly frequently. Gotcha. So. Oh, I did. I did want to talk about one more thing. Um, do you? Well, do you want to jump into like do some kind of like a Resident Evil Three spoiler kind of thing? Couple, just couple oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I played Ori again. Um, nice. Ju- just to load it up, and they patched it. And boy, does it run so good now. Does it really? Yes. Oh my God, oh, it is God. so. It runs so beautifully. Um, some of the achievements got fixed and stuff like that, but yeah, mm-hmm. I was just playing around with the map and stuff and like i was just clicking on as fast as i could and it was so responsive and coming up so easily nice. so if you haven't played ori and the will of the wisps play it now because that game is it's ready it's it's perfect it's it's so good <laughs> it's um, back out of the oven yeah it, it, is, it is quite good so i would i would definitely recommend playing it especially if you have game pass before we do our um, game of the year discussion at the end of the year i have to go back and play it yeah after the patch because yeah 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 yeah. you need to yeah if you haven't 100 percent the game um i would definitely recommend going back and doing so with that way you can actually enjoy it and not have to wait 10 seconds at a time right to uh it was just it was kind of 
hard to believe that they sent it out like that, but they should have just delayed it a month. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. I don't know what we're thinking was that. Maybe it just runs so well on the one X or something, but he, I even uh, heard it ran poorly on the X. Yeah, I mean, so it's just kind of crazy that they would send that game out like that. But um Yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's amazing. And uh everyone should play it because it's beautiful. It is, and it's on Game Pass, so it's yeah. uh, kind of free. Um so yeah, Resident Evil Three, we're gonna um, I'll probably stop timestamp this episode just so you guys know when we're talking about spoilers. Um, Resident Evil Three is a I don't know what twenty-year-old game, so you yeah. probably know this. You probably know the story <laughs> of it, but it's got some cool moments. Um, so, I, I what I what I enjoy about this game so much is that the beginning is just so intense, like it just gets you right yes. into it. And, and I love the fact that it starts out in first person. Um, definitely gave me heavy Resident Evil 7 vibes, which was cool. Um, but yeah, the, the, the opening is just so intense and awesome. So cool. Yep. And then poor, It's so uh, different from RE2. Like, yeah. Yeah, RE2 is very slow. And um, like Resident Evil 2 is way more of a scarier game, I think, than 3 yeah, is. For sure. For sure. Um, obviously, same zombies. Zombies do the same things. Um, there's actually a lot of the same models in three that yeah. are from two, <laughs> but it's the same city, so you can expect it makes sense. Yeah, see similar people, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so, Cor- corners were cut. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just a lot more intense. A lot, a really awesome opening to to that mm-hmm. game. Um, any cool moments that you can think of? I do have a question. Do you remember the guy at the beginning of the game who? was in the back of the truck. Yes. And he was saying, like, this is the safest place to be, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Do we, I mean, ever, do we ever see that guy again? Because I never saw him. No, he, I think he just was just there just to be there. As, I, I kind of wish you could have gone back to that room. Yeah, that, that would have been cool. Or like, or, like, you see him as a zombie or something or something, you know. Yeah. But obviously, I mean, I mean, he's a smart guy. I mean, I mean, it's – that is probably the safest spot if you're if you're quiet and you know, obviously he's gonna get killed when the when the missiles came at the very end of the game. But that's a buzz kill. But <laughs> but if you can survive or, that, or maybe not. Maybe maybe when well, now it was a nuke. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I guess he could survive. I don't know. Maybe that's what Resident Evil Eight is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's him escaping the city. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, one of the, one of the coolest moments in the game is when you're playing as Carlos for the first time. And you go and you find Barry's zombie and you have to kill him to get his um, ID card. Yep. And then you get to explore the police department again, which is really cool. I did not – as someone who did not play the first – or the original Resident Evil 3. Yeah, which I – That was did really not cool. not that far enough to, to witness that moment. Right. That was so cool. And you get yeah. to see how, like, all the cop bodies got laid the way they did. Yeah. Like exactly. When you're walking in the hall and you see – all these cops die, and you're like, oh, that's exactly how I remember them from Resident Evil 2. Yeah, what it, yeah it, was, it was super, super cool to – I almost thought that you might get, like, a glimpse of Mr. X or something, mm-hmm. which would have been – because I don't, I don't know exactly – well, it's before – this happened bef- – well, I guess this happened before Leon came, so I guess that makes sense. Was it – it was before Leon came? Yeah, well, yeah, because – all, after Leon gets there, that's when all the cops are dead and stuff like oh, that. Oh, and the, and that cop got bit. Yeah, and ran inside. Yep. Yeah. And you don't you don't ever see him again um, in, in Resident Evil Three. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it makes sense why I feel like two and three came out so close to each other because they're so interconnected. That it's yeah. just it was really cool, you know, playing through the police department, like you said, seeing the way the zombies or the policemen got killed and stuff like that, and then you actually are the one that destroyed the wall to get to the the office or whatever, which is, I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, so. And it, it was like, it's a decently short section. Like, it's, oh it's yeah, like yeah. 30 minutes, yeah, 30 minutes or like less. Or like six or seven rooms in the police department. You don't explore as much as you did with Leon, obviously, but. Yeah. But it, nonetheless, really cool section of the game. Yeah. It was super cool. Um, I'm trying to think of some other spots. Oh, when you see the uh, the gun shop owner. Oh yeah, that was cool. Replenish Jill. Yep, that that was cool. Um, I actually walked down into the parking deck, but it, the parking garage, but it, it was blocked off. 
Um, and I was trying to see if there was anything. In so that, that truck that was, that was rammed into the wall, that wasn't as a result of Mr. X, was it? Um, no, because it, it was before. Yeah, I think so that must was, have already been there. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, seeing the uh, seeing the gunshot owner was cool, and then obviously he goes into the to the room, whatever, with with his daughter, um, since mm -hmm. he doesn't want to leave. And then um, I think that's when you get chased with Nemesis right after that. Uh, yeah, you get chased with Nemesis. Go to Carlos to the station. Mm -hmm. Get on the train. And then you play as Carlos again, right? Yeah, so it was actually really cool. Like, if so, at, right after that part where you get the keys and you unlock the gate and you go into that little house, if you go upstairs, there's a memo written by, um, I guess, the owner of the house. And she had, she had said she had been complaining to the superstore owner that the giant, like, bobblehead that was on top, she mm -hmm. said, was, like, super loose and could cause damage or, or hurt somebody if it ever got you know if it ever fell off and then right after that yeah. you go up the stairs and it falls off so that was kind of just a a cool oh, little like heck. nod you know nod to uh to what's coming so that that was right. really cool um I, I really enjoyed all the chase scenes that nemesis had um yeah they were cool they were, those I mean, were pretty cool and um i don't know he just wasn't super i mean especially once you beat the game a couple times and you get you know your unlocks and stuff um, he's pretty easy to manage with as far as just shooting him down and then able to run off, run away. You can down with one grenade. Yeah. Um, one rock line. Yeah. I, mean. I still think like the, the, the dodge mechanic is okay. I don't think it's super great all the time. Mm -hmm. um, zombies are, they are so like sticky. They can just get to you. Yeah. It's so, so hard to get away from. It, it, it's a little annoying trying to get them off of you. Um, so I wish like you could dodge them a little easier, but I mean generally the game's pretty open enough to where you can, if you wanted to, you can just move around them. Um, but that that's yeah. kind of like the only grab I have about the zombies. Other other than that, they're pretty, um, pretty pretty perfect. Pretty yeah, pretty per perfect. They're <laughs> like I, I was so skip ahead a little bit when you get to the hospital. Uh, one of the cool moments is when you take over as Carlos and you're uh, fending off the horde um, that's coming in. And right after the lights go out and you, you kill the, the hunter and you go in and hit the turn the light off, I was just standing there shooting zombies. And this one had walked in and he dodged my shot and stumbled into the room, like all the way into the room. And then another zombie was walking in. So they just had like a very crazy motion to them where they could, they can make up a lot of ground, even though they're super slow. Like they, they, just kind of circumstantial too. Like it's just random yeah. that they, that that happened. Yeah. Um, any other cool moments you want to talk about in the game? One thing I thought was weird was, okay, so when, when you get on the train, do you start playing as Carlos first, or do you play as Jill after the train crashes? You jump to Carlos. And you do the police department? Yes. Yes. Okay, so what's weird to me is it jumps back to Jill, and she does kind of that underground portion then she comes above ground and then you have that fight with nemesis mm -hmm. um at the clock tower yeah 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 the clock tower well, that, um, that was a really cool um yeah that was a cool fight cool fight and like kind of a pseudo chase scene of him just shooting fire out everywhere burning everything that was pretty cool mm -hmm. but then you go right back to carlos after that so it's like a maybe you're playing a still for 15 20 minutes and then you're back to carlos again mm -hmm. i thought that was kind of weird and I don't know, I feel like that section was cut short a little bit because I heard that the clock tower was originally longer and it was just more substantial in general. And then there was another area that got cut out of the game. Hmm. So I think, I think there was some stuff that got cut from RE3. Maybe. I, I, don't, I don't hear anything about that, but and I don't felt like it. I mean, yeah, you jump back to Carlos pretty quick quickly well don't you no because right after the, the the fight with nemesis on the roof um you tar you take over as jill again and then you go to over the bridge right 
Wait, what roof? Well, you do the fight with Nemesis on the roof. You, yeah, you do the fight with Nemesis on the roof, and then you, you, um, you go through the the gun shop owner and stuff, and then you end up um, running away from Nemesis. Running away from Nemesis, and then and then you get on the train. Was that was that the train part? The, or the subway. Subway. Because you, you remember you you you're getting chased by Nemesis, and then you catch up with Carlos. And y'all get down to the subway, mm-hmm. and then it crashes, but then it switches to Carlos at the police department, and then after that, it's Jill going through that little underground area coming up. Oh, and then right, right, right. Okay. Nemesis jumps out of the water. Yeah, okay, okay. And then, you him again and, then and then you're back as Carlos again in the hospital. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I wish I was longer. Um, <laughs> not that like I didn't like playing as Carlos, but fighting the hunters got a little annoying in the hospital yeah but, i mean they, they had they had like that weird one hit move that they could do to you which yeah kind of annoying. I, I got hung up on the, the part where you fight two of them at the same time uh, I, I did get hung up on that for a couple minutes um and then i was able to like throw a grenade in there and take out both of them it was also kind of random on where they were when you opened the door yes yeah because like I, i'd opened the door and one came through but the other didn't right and then the after three or four times trying to fight him, um, they were both near the doorway, so I just threw a grenade and killed them both. Mm-hmm. Um, so it kind of worked out. But yeah, they, they were a little annoying. Um, I thought like the giant frog things in the sewers were pretty cool. They had they had a one hit kill as well. It's, yeah, but they were they were pretty easy to manage. Yeah, yeah, they were especially they especially were the, once you got the rocket or the uh, the grenade launcher. Because um, mm-hmm. you could one hit them, I think. Yeah, acid yeah, round. Yeah, you could one hit them. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, those are cool. You never get a rocket launcher in the game, which is weird because that's usually like kind of like the staple of um, Resident Evil. But that, that's what I thought you'd kill Nemesis with too, because yeah, he uses a rocket launcher. Yeah. Um. So. It's not. But um. Let's see. After that, uh, I enjoyed the warehouse part where you have to get the the fuses or whatever. Um. Especially towards the end where you. You go to like the, the the shipping containers, like all the zombies pour out, and then if you back up enough, the giant frog thing will come out, so you can just like get yeah. super overwhelmed. <laughs> I that died. Was- I died once on that part. <laughs> it's like, shit. Um, yeah, that was cool. That was that that part of the warehouse was cool. Yeah, and then we talked about uh, once you get inside the facility. So, is it the same facility as it was in Resident Evil Two, or they just have so many like? Of those like facilities, you know, like the the three walkways coming into like a centrifuge in the middle. Yeah, I don't know. Like it, it looked, it looked like the same one as as two. Because I because I can't remember. I guess it would make sense because in Leon's or in the campaign Resident Evil Two, how does the how does the place start blowing up? It, uh there's a self-destruct sequence because okay. the virus, the G virus left the facility. Oh, okay. Well, maybe, it, maybe it was two separate facilities then. Like what, what are the people Racken city doing? Like not knowing about these giant places. Yeah, I don't know, but it looks, it did look similar though, because at the very end of the game, when you're, when you're leaving as Jill, you get on that elevator yeah. to go up to the, to the helipad. Yeah. The other pad, and you go like what looks exactly like the, the area from Resident Evil 2. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I could be the same, could be different, but who knows? But um and then fighting the uh once you kind of get towards the end of the game and you fight you fight Nemesis and kind of like the gauntlet arena or whatever. Um yeah. that was pretty cool. Uh, especially like I I, I kind of wish they would would throw more zombies at you. Um yeah, they just threw two at you. Yeah, it was like two at a time. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that that was pretty cool. And and once you get all your upgraded weapons and stuff, and like and start, and start and start like unlocking the the bonus weapons, you can blow through um, Nemesis at that point. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, you can demolish um, them. <laughs> yeah, and then and then after that, of course, uh, Carlos drops the acid on him, and then you're like, and it's funny because like even the achievements that would pop up be like Nemesis down. It's like question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> And then, and then you fight him one more time after he's like this giant, uh, 
I don't know, acid filled nemesis. Behemoth. Super easy fight. Oh, yeah. Like I think it was much more of like a cool moment type of fight. Because yep, you can down them. Do it. Down, and then you can push in two of the I don't yeah. know the arms power sources before it gets back up and you just have the last one. Yeah, that, that gun was super cool. Like just blowing him away at the yeah. end was just super satisfying. That's badass. Yeah. I, I I really enjoyed the campaign and I I really like Jill as a character. Like I just love I love playing as like strong like female protagonists mm-hmm. like uh like Lara Croft or uh you know playing as Kate and Gears Five. I just yeah I feel like we don't get enough of that and it's it's really satisfying when you get like a really awesome like female led character. Right. So yeah, Joel's definitely definitely super cool. And it's it's weird playing because like up to, up until like Resident Evil four and five, uh, I really didn't know anything about Resident Evil storyline or anything. So like seeing mm-hmm. Jill in Resident Evil Five, like when she's got like the weird superpowers and stuff, and she could like well no, she was controlled by um Wesker in five. Uh because you have to fight her, right? Yeah, you have you have to fight her and shoot off her uh shoot off her um like the little spider thing she's got on her that controls her. Right. Um, yeah, it's it kind of, it was cool seeing Leon in two and then Leon in four and then Leon in six, who was just like this <laughs> complete badass by it by Resident Evil Six, but Yeah, he's it's, like it's cool how that they have like these central characters that they kind of switch off between Yeah. Each game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, great franchise. But uh yeah, that was that was Resident Evil Three. It was a super great game. I'll probably play it a couple more times. Um, sort of and too. stuff like that. But um, do you want to take a quick break or just jump into the news? Uh, let's take a quick break. I'm gonna get a like some water. Okay. All right. Welcome back, guys. We are on to the uh, the news portion of the show. Um, I had some some pretty good stuff this week that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna start off. Uh, Google Stadia went free. I think everyone kind of saw that coming as it has not been performing too well. I, um, I tried to download the app and log in and stuff, and it required some sort of code, and I mm. didn't know how to get that code, so I just gave up because I was kind of curious on see how it worked and stuff, um, but I wasn't able to try it out. I don't know if you had attempted to try it out. And no, I, I hadn't attempted to try it, but okay, did they go free? Didn't they say it was because, like, due to the coronavirus? Like, Probably, yeah. People? Well, I think they said yeah. that. Good. I think they said that, but they probably went free because. I, yeah, yeah, I think it's just good timing um, <laughs> for, yeah. for them. So you get two months of free, and then after that, it's I think it's ten bucks a month. After that, um, and if you're already a pro member of Stadia, um, you can you won't be charged for two months, which is which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can use like your I think you can use Xbox controllers and stuff like that, PS4 controllers with it, so you don't need like Google's um, version of that. Um, which which is cool. Uh, I do yeah. like that you can use you know your other um, other products without having to you know spend seventy bucks I think for that controller. So you can can you download it on your phone? Yeah. There, so there's a phone app. Um, I think there's a I think there's a TV app now. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you can do it like on your iPad, tablet, stuff like that. Um, phones. I don't I don't know. Without the Chrome cast itself i don't know there's like a an option to download like on your, your normal smart tv um but there's a couple of different options you can you can do okay yeah, yeah. i mean i guess that's so, cool if you can yeah. play I want, I want to try it to see how it works but i mean i'm not gonna be mad about it if i can't <laughs> right right i mean you have other outlets to, to play on i mean nick you want to read the next story yeah, yeah. So Japanese rating system CERO or CERO, they closed down until May due to the coronavirus, but um, apparently the ESRB and PEGI are both working remotely and won't be affected. So I mean, this could be bad news for some games that are even coming out in May, June, July, mm-hmm. because you, obviously you want to get rated in every country and if you know sarah's down and they're not working remotely then you might want to run into some trouble yeah so you might i mean if you have a game releasing in in, in may or whatever um mm-hmm. and it hasn't been rated yet it just won't be able to come out in japan um still gonna be able to come out in the other territories and stuff like that 
Yeah. Um, so I think as a, as they announced that, um, I think IGN had reached out to the ESRB and, and Peggy and, you know, they had said that, you know, everybody's working from home. So there's, there shouldn't be any limitations to what they can do. Um, yeah. So, so games can still get rated and still can, can come out. So they did clarify that, which was, which is a good I, thing. <laughs> I wonder if there will be any delays because of this. I mean, I know it, it's really just a delay for Japan, but yeah. if you have a company like Nintendo trying to release a game worldwide, do you think they delay it because of Sarah being closed or do you think they would release anyways and then release in Japan later? I, I don't know. Um, they they would probably just wait. And, I feel like if something was something big was going to come out, mm-hmm. I feel like they would go ahead and just launch it, and then Japan would just have to wait an extra month or right. or whatever. Um, I'm surprised they don't have them working at home. That just seems kind of weird. That is super weird. I don't know. But why. maybe maybe it's just a different situation there. Um, so I, I don't I don't I don't really know. I can't really uh, form an opinion off of that, but. Um, but yeah, I would, I would imagine if it's something huge, which Nintendo, I mean, other than, uh, Xenoblade, yeah, Xenoblade, they don't really have anything coming that's huge anytime soon that, that we, or that we know of at least. Um, so I, I if they, I think if companies do have stuff to release, I, th- I still think they would release it worldwide and then just probably wait for Japan, um, to get up and running again so they could get the game rated and stuff. Right. Um, so biggest biggest news of the week though is right before uh, Xbox had their what was it before or after I think it was before um, they had their inside access inside Xbox um, video that came out mm-hmm. um, PS5 dropped the uh, or Sony dropped the uh, what the Dual Sense looks like which is the new PS5 controller and it looks weird it, it does look <laughs> super weird so at first I was like this thing is kind of ugly. Mm-hmm. Um, the the two tones is weird. Uh, there's been so many memes about it looking like the robot from um, Wally. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been a, a lot of good fan fan mockups of different colors. <laughs> yeah. Um, it looks like an Xbox controller. It uh, does. It's definitely more curvy and um, I don't know. I feel like I'm. I kind of like it. It looks. It looks like it feels nice. Yeah. Exactly. If that makes sense. And I still prefer the Xbox controller. Just I like the offset um, sticks mm-hmm. versus you know the parallel. The, yeah, the, the parallel sticks from the Dual Shocks. But yeah, it looks it looks more in line with an Xbox controller, and I'm kind of into it. Um, definitely can't wait to to hold it and, and see how it feels. Because yeah, I mean the PS5 controller or the PS4 controller is okay. It just doesn't feel great. Yeah, I don't no. hate using it, but I feel like my it's, it's just like. My hand feels weird when I hold it. I'm just not. <laughs> I, don't know super, to, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I'm not super into it. Um, but yeah, it's it's so it's it's got uh it's got a microphone built in, which is which is cool. So you don't necessarily need a, a headset to talk to your friends. Um, now they did say nice. if you're you plan on playing for a long period of time that you should probably use a headset. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine the quality of this microphone is going to be super great. Um. But I do like that they actually have like the PlayStation logo on the the controller itself, which is cool. Yeah, it's sweet. Um, and then so they call it the Dual Sense because it's going to be like a div- it's kind of got like a when they you, when you use the triggers, they say that you can really, especially when like you're drawing back a bow or something, you can really feel like the tension of you know firing and you know releasing an, an arrow. Yeah. Which, which is very cool. Um, now, is that is that haptic feedback? Is that what that is, or is that something else? I think it's something different because I think that's already in there. Uh, the haptic okay. feedback. Um. So we'll, we'll, I think we'll, we'll be learning more stuff about this as we get closer, you know, to the to the launch of the PlayStation. But yeah, yeah I'm kind of into the design. I I do like it a lot. I think I think the coloring is a little weird, but yeah, the design I, itself is cool. Yeah, they did mention that normally it's a a single um, color, but they wanted to do like a, a, you know, a two different color kind of scheme, which has got me thinking like, what is the PS5 going to look like? Is it going to be one color? Typically, typically controllers match the console. So is it going to be two-tone like this? I think that'd be really cool if it was two-tone. Yeah. 
I mean, the best of best of both worlds, I guess. Yeah, I like what. What can they do to the PS5 to make it look different than the PS4? Aside from adding another stack to the top of it, you know, having four <laughs> four little uh, pieces of the sandwich. And if the PS5 is white or you know predominantly white, this I think this marks the first time that a a non Nintendo console is going to be launching with a white version instead of the black version first, which is kind of interesting. 360. Oh, 360 was white. It was white. You're right. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, 360, but the PlayStation 3 was black. So this is the first, yeah, this is, the first, okay. So that's, that's cool. Um, yeah. So I wonder, I wonder, cause we already know what the, obviously the color of the, the series X is going to look like. So, mm. but this is, I mean, it seems like a pretty big change up for, for Sony. I mean, changed up the controller more than they have ever i mean yeah they've only made small iterations on their past controllers yeah the dual shock so, 4 is a little bit different than like the dual shock 3 but yeah they they're all, they all generally look pretty pretty similar so this yeah. Is, yeah this is a, the most major iteration we've seen of of this controller and i'm i'm kind of digging it i'm hoping i'm hoping the ps5 is look pretty slick hoping yeah, they can, can do it right i mean I don't love the the look of the PS4 or the the functionality of it either, just because it juts out in the back and then and then caves off like that. Yeah, and slants, slants down, whatever. Slants down. I mean, I guess it's cool, but it it might not fit in everybody's cabinets or cupboards or whatever. It doesn't fit mine. Like it's too 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 long or too yeah. deep. Um, yeah, I mean. It's it's smaller than the original Xbox is, because like the 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 main the OG Xbox was like it was huge. It's a tank. <laughs> yeah, it's like it barely fits into the spot where it's at, like to the point where I've almost considered like just getting like a one S or something, mm -hmm. um, just so, so I can like put this thing somewhere else because it's freaking huge. It's but, just so big. I mean, I, had, I actually had a dream about buying a a one S. Because it was on sale for hundred. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about doing like the the digital edition or something. It's like one fifty or something like that. Yeah. Just cause. I mean, just just because. But um, but yeah, I'm into it. I, I definitely, I definitely like the look of it. Um, the fact that it kind of just looks more like an Xbox controller, which is, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But uh, yeah, I like it. A lot. A lot of people are hating on it, but I mean, other than like the colors being weird. It just, other than that, it looks good. Yeah, it looks just looks more comfortable to hold. Mm -hmm. um, that's all you can ask for Nick you want to read the uh, the last story that we got yeah so this is very relevant to what we've been talking about but there is I guess a couple rumors that Resident Evil 4 remake is coming in 2022 Ooh. which kind of lines up with what we've been seeing because what Resident Evil 8 is supposed to come out next well, like Q1 next year mm -hmm. 2021 so that would mean that the next remake would come out 2022. And based off the current trajectory, at this point, I don't know if I could see them remaking Code Veronica just because they're like kind of, they're kind of on a roll. Like I yeah. know, I know people were disappointed in Resident Evil 3, but I'm sure it's selling well. And they probably just want to get to four as fast as possible because they know that's going to sell gangbusters when it comes out. Oh yeah. Well, I think, I mean, because obviously Resident Evil 2 and 3 were kind of, I mean, they were being developed at the same time. Um, so I think with probably the success, and I don't know how long for, if it's in development, um, I think probably the success of 2 uh, probably told at Capcom that, you know, hey, we need to just continue these, continue these remakes because people absolutely love them. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I mean, like we were saying before, I, I would love to see an updated version of four. We need it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's time. And it's 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 a really long. Is it a long? It's a long game, right? It's pretty long, isn't it? My my last full playthrough was like eleven hours, and that was after. I mean, I had played it. Yeah. A lot before then, so like. Yeah, it's, it's, probably it's, first playthrough would be like 15, 15, 14 hours. Yeah. It's pretty long for a Resident Evil game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially considering like two and three, you can beat within like five, six hours, seven hours, maybe. Mm. So, but yeah, I, I'm super into another remake. I would love, I would really want them to do redo one, 
Um, but I know they just did like kind of like a remaster of that one. Anyway, yeah. I would love to see one done. Um, you know, in the in the the style, and whatever the style of RE2 and RE3. Have you played one? I had it downloaded. I have not played it yet. Um, I, no, actually, I think I had it on the PlayStation, um, play, PS4 when I had like the the PlayStation Plus because it was free. And then I didn't I didn't pay any more money for the PS Plus. Mm-hmm. So I don't think I have it anymore. But I did play through a lot of um, Zero. Oh, nice. Um, that 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 game is actually pretty pretty fun. Um, I, I do I do enjoy Zero nice. uh, quite a bit. I, but... I've been thinking about playing through. Resident Evil One, just to experience the tank controls, because yeah. I haven't actually. It, it looks. I heard it looks super nice um, with the remaster, because obviously, obviously you, you just, it's kind of like a, the Im- it's like a static image, because uh, mm-hmm. you just kind of run through the environment and you change camera angles and stuff. Um, but yeah, I heard it. I heard it looks like super nice. Like the the images are, are like super high quality. So. Nice. Yeah, I'm curious about going back and playing or playing that really for the first time because I, I played a little bit um, growing up, but I didn't really mess with it much. Mm-hmm. And being as that I am with or being super into Resident Evil here lately, uh, yeah, I thought about it as well. Yeah, I might might pull the trigger, either download it on Xbox or buy it on Switch. Yeah, we'll see. Thirty bucks is a lot for Switch, though. Yeah, it's um, too much. Because they don't, I don't think they have them on Game Pass right now. I know like four and five and six are on Game Pass. They used to have zero, or they used to have one on Game Pass. I think I really? downloaded it, but I never played it. Okay. So we'll Let's see if I still have it. Huh? We'll see if I still have it on my Xbox. Yeah, I'll have to recheck and see if it's on there because that that would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, any any games that you are looking forward to playing? Um, like maybe something in your backlog or anything. Because right, I mean, there, I don't think there's really much games coming out here um, anytime soon. I know Final Fantasy VII just came out. Um, I I've been like watching some videos of Seven. Yeah. I'm starting to get kind of interested in it. Heard good things about so, it. So I might pick it up at some point. Yeah. Um. I mean, other than that, slightly piquing my interest. I'm looking forward to Xenoblade Chronicles, but. Gosh, aside from that, I don't. I don't even know. I, I need to get back into Dragon Quest because I, I fell off that a little bit when yeah. I when I went into busy season at work. Yeah, that, that yeah, that's, RPGs are kind of tough to because you really just need a, a lot of time to mm. get through them. And that's why I've been playing a lot of Resident Evil because they're like short games. Yeah, yeah, that I can get through pretty pretty quickly. So. Well, that's what I did last night. I started a run, and I got like, to almost halfway through the game in like thirty minutes. <laughs> Jeez. So I'm gonna stop, but um, but yeah, they're, they're, yeah, I love God, this is so much fun. I love it. Yeah. What about you? Anything you're looking forward to playing? Um, I really need to play Spider-Man and and pick that back up and and finish that, and then I kind of want to try out that Days Gone game that I picked up on Black Friday but haven't played it yet. Oh, I forgot you got that. Yeah. Um. So I kind of want to see what that looks like, and um, I think that's. Probably, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna play some more Resident Evil Three, get through that. Um, I might pick up Resident Evil Two again. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I was kind of interested in going back in the Halo cam- Halo Five's campaign. Nice, because I don't. Everyone says that that campaign was terrible, and I don't remember it at all. I don't remember it being terrible. I just remember it not leaving a large impression. Yeah, like four and five, I don't really remember the campaigns that much too. I remember liking five more than four. Yeah, for sure. I, I, yeah, I just I cannot remember. Um, I mean, we we campaign. played through it together. Yeah. So I remember like searching for the collectibles in one level, but I, yeah, I I don't remember much either. Yeah, um, and I kind of want to go back and play Resident Evil Five. Me too. We, we should play. We should play multiplayer. Yeah, maybe we should do some co-op. I w- I was thinking about that last night. I was like, I could go for some Resident Evil Five. Yeah, really good. Because it's been. It, I I feel like it's been since since we played it at the beach that one week. Yeah. Like eight years ago, 
that I actually played it. I mean, it's been forever. So, like, that's a game I could definitely get back to. Yeah, cause it, and it's on Game Pass, too. Because um, mm-hmm. I don't think I ever – I was trying to think if I unlocked all this stuff back in the day. I think I did. All the infinite guns and stuff. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm very curious about going back into that and playing it. Yeah. That, that was – that was a, I mean, that was, it kind of got, it strayed from four. It got way more action, actiony than four was. Mm-hmm. Um, and Chris was just like such a, a meathead. It's he was a bulldozer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I do remember that game being pretty fun, especially. Just, it was just a good time. Yeah. And it, it was, it was, there was some puzzles in it and like the, the, uh, the monsters were cool to fight and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we, we should we should we should do that sometime this week. Yeah, we should. I play it. I'll I'll download it on Game Pass. Yeah, I'll make sure I have it downloaded as well. Okay. And uh, and check it out. But get into it. But yeah, I think that's everything. I'll probably. I mean, I'm obviously going to be playing a little bit more Animal Crossing as well. Yeah. Um. And uh, I think I think that's it, man. Any any other games you can think of? That's it. That's it for me. I'm. Just all Resident Evil right now, and Animal Crossing. Of course. <laughs> oh, there's there's something I meant to uh, meant to mention last week. Um, so I don't know if you know, but um, what what's JD's name in real life from Scrubs? Zach Braff. Zach, oh, the podcast. Yes, Zach Braff and uh, Donald Faison yeah. are doing a podcast where they watch every episode of Scrubs, even the like the the two new seasons. Um, and they just talk over it and kind of like give you like some backstory into what's going on with the episode and stuff like that and like their mm-hmm. interview process. So I watched, I listened to the first episode. I didn't watch yeah. the show while I was listening to it, because um, it was mainly it mainly they were just talking about like their interview process and stuff like that. But it was, yeah. it was super cool. I was yeah, just, I, I listened to the first one too, and it was it was just it, it's so my nostalgia. Like watching Scrubs, like they're just the they, fact they, they sound like, the same too. <laughs> yeah, the fact that they're like best friends in real life is super cool. Yeah, but I, I did go back and I watched the first four episodes of Scrubs, and th- the first one was good, but like it really finds its stride in like the the third yeah. or fourth episode. Yeah, I mean, Scrubs so good. Uh, we talked nice. about like the janitor not being real, and it was just like a figment of. Um, it was like a concept for the for the season. Yeah, it was just like a, a figment of JD's imagination or something like that because he never talks to anybody else in the first season. Right. I think it's just JD. Yeah, and then they scrapped it because. Yeah, well, they, well, they didn't know, you know, because I think he was just so well liked, um, mm. be, being the janitor. But yeah, it was, it was, it was a really cool. Um, cool, to, cool to hear about all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was cool learn, yeah, learning about that stuff, but um. But yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I figured you had probably heard, at least heard about it, but uh, yeah. I wasn't sure if you had listened to it. It was, it was super fun. I need to listen to the other one. I know, I know they're doing two a week now because people are demanding him so much. Yeah, and I mean, it's good. I mean, gosh, there was what nine seasons of that show, with each season having like twenty episodes. Yeah, so, I mean, they, they got a lot of stuff. It's gonna take them a while, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was kind of cool that the fact that they did that, and it's kind of a perfect timing just with everything going on. You can, you know yeah you can just kind of rant and stuff it's pretty funny it's good stuff but yeah that is going to wrap up the show this week appreciate everyone that um that tuned in and has been uh download and listen to the podcast mm-hmm. um you can send us emails to gaming with the bros at yahoo.com um so you can send us like topic ideas if you have any questions for us anything like that um go ahead and shoot us an email or of course you can um if you're li- if you watch it on youtube you can leave a comment um either that or on facebook and we'll mm-hmm. uh, we'll answer you and stuff like that yeah, tell us tell us how you liked Resident Evil Three or or what Resident Evil you're playing through right now. I mean, yeah, there's like literally a billion. Even like the Revelations <laughs> One and Two are really good too. Yeah, those are great. Um, those, those are great games if you can uh, get on the Switch. Um, those those are great games as well. But yeah, appreciate everyone that's been uh, listening, and we will see you guys um next week. Bye bye. Later.